And welcome to another High Ground Podcast in under 10 minutes. So, I'm Stevie W. Callum. And today we're going to be looking at the worst sequel ever. Now, this is just oh, our God. opinions. Yeah. Okay, so, what do you think? Worst sequel you've ever seen to a good film? The worst sequel I have ever seen to a good film is Robocop 3. Okay, Robocop 3 did have its problems because it was in it yeah. was in storage for years when Orion Pictures, if I'm right, went bankrupt. Yeah, they, they came out about two years too late and it was like, so dodgy, but you, yeah. They recently actually... Um, resurfaced with a film called The Velcro Experiment oh I started that's, watching yeah, that I'm that's good. Uh, no Robocop 3 I just oh, it's just I mean Robocop 2 is quite weak as well but at least Peter Weller's still in it and if you actually ever get a chance to read the original Frank Miller comic based on this, the original script of Robocop 2 it's, it's really good like um, but I, th- I don't know Robocop 3 it just it, it was really sort of hard like on the nose liberal stuff like don't let the police move in and take your neighbourhood away and, and I, I don't mind stuff like that but I think for a Robocop film that's like what does Robocop have to do in that like that's that's a sort of you know in the in the early 90s a lot of the a lot of the action films and that or, or films set in LA touched on the Rodney King thing didn't they yeah so I, I, I Robocop doesn't really have a place in a story like that I don't think I thought it was just that film was there just to sell toys with the robot oh, engines and it, sell video games. It definitely was, yeah. And we've said this before, haven't we, how it's weird that Robocop is an R-rated franchise, but it sells toys. Yeah, I think by the it's third one it so became more strange. of a children's thing. Oh, definitely, yeah. You can see that. I mean, the jetpack and the... No, that's not Robocop. Yeah. And, the, and the stupid punk scene as well. It's just... It the hell out of me. It's, what's really disappointing about it is it's directed by Fred Decker, who did Night of the Creeps. And that's one of my favourite 80s horror films. So, what happened? Uh, what well, the same thing that happened with uh, uh, Batman Forever sells toys yeah, it sells, sells toys sells Big Macs <laughs> so yeah what about yours okay, I've got a few uh, I, I, I think Rambo 3 and bear in mind it's been over oh, 20 odd years yeah. is unwatchable I've never sat down in one viewing and watched Rambo 3 I was on telly the other night actually <laughs> uh, I, 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 have, I remember seeing Grease 2 again one I've watched in years oh, yeah, only bad. because it has Michelle Pfeiffer in it and in the early 90s after Batman Returns I was a huge Michelle Pfeiffer fan and the song Reproduction that they sing in it, absolutely terrible. Now, I'm not a big Grease fan, but no, uh, Grease 2, when you try and watch it, it's so cringeworthy. It's like Michelle Pfeiffer singing, and I, I said that, I love Michelle Pfeiffer, especially in the uh, in the early 90s now, I'm sure my age. But that is terrible. But if we're talking modern, I also, I got, I've got a little bit more of appreciation now, but at the time, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Oh, yeah. The bit where they spelled out uh, when Mr. Fantastic was talking to uh, uh, Andre Bragner, now who's in the Brooklyn Nine Nine, about how the geeks, how I was one of these people that was bailed, was beaten up, and, oh, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, at the I time get it. that was really cringy. Yeah, wasn't I it? get it, I get it. You're the geek. You're now the popular one because you're going to save the world, and the sports star's now the one that's basically really taking orders from you. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, the geeks will rule the world. And I was like, oh yeah. god, no. And, and it get a funny it's the one that killed the Fantastic Four yeah and see two on the nose like Robocop 3 there's, they're, they're trying to hammer home a point yeah. that you just don't need hammered home that you can see is, is, is and funnily enough coming off the musical thing um, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever is terrible as well Staying Alive and all I really know oh, about I've it's... seen it but all I know is it uh, uh, what's his name uh, George Walter had to shave his chest did he blame yes. Stallone for it no idea Mike. and Stallone's got a little cameo walking down the street he, yeah, as a director, and he's a director so but then again he was still oh, while we're talking director. Stallone how about Rocky V he took my room yeah kill him dad he took my room yeah. possibly the worst like motive for a murder ever yeah <laughs> Oh, that was terrible. Don't, don't, don't use a double. It was like that and Rocky Rambo three. Yeah, same time, like kind a of kills double. Two. A double tap, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Until Cliff Hanger, the Demolition Man, and then and Rocky Balboa um, as well. Yeah, I think that really picked up. So, um, but yeah, ah, uh, yeah, R- R- Rocky five, terrible. He's got brain damage in Rocky five, and they suddenly seem to forget about it. But yeah, the other one, uh, it's kind of like a good thing. Yeah, I think Rocky Balboa is kind of a soft reboot, isn't it? Yeah. Like in in the same with Rambo, the, the Burma one. Yeah. Um, that's another annoying thing I hate about Rambo is the name. The name of the films really annoys me. Like the the numeric system just doesn't. I think I, they think just people, do one, two, three, four, like everything else. I think they think people are idiots, so they just say, "Oh, it's Rambo, the new Rambo movie." And then again, if you could put on the wrong Blu-ray by accident, yeah, the film you think, oh, like, I thought I was watch... watching the first one. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna watch it. the Rambo, and that was the. the... Oh, I mean, this this is a subject that you can go on way longer than ten yeah. minutes, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. There's, there's so many I mean if you go into the horror world 
but then again, horror franchises work. of bad sequels. But then again, with horror, and if we're talking specifically the eighties ones, they, they literally make a bad film and then pull a good one straight out afterwards. Yeah. So it's constant rather than now they do the sequels, bad one, the and then just like yeah, we're just gonna shelve it for a few years until it runs out of. Uh, until it runs out of copyright and we have yeah. to sell it back to the <laughs> give it back to the writers yeah uh, uh, I've we've missed one Batman and Robin the one that killed an entire oh, genre yeah 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 Joel Schumacher God. I can't believe we didn't think of that no, that's... Um, yeah no, I, I mean I suppose going hand in hand with that again now is quite fondly remembered as Superman 4 isn't it killed the man of steel for <sighs> I am 20, fond of that film. I am is? fond of that film. Yeah, I am fond of that film for yeah. the pure and simple. Nineteen years. Nineteen years. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fond of that film for the pure and simple reason. After Superman Four came out, that's when I started collecting Superman books. Okay. So I'm fond of Superman Four, and the fact that it, it was filmed in Milton Keynes. Yeah, which is near us. Which is yes, and which I, we have actually been to. Yeah, I, I, one of the greatest, one of the best things I've done in the last few years is taking you to Metropolis, just opposite uh, the <laughs> train station. Yeah, is that a train like, station. Yeah, it's yeah. A train station. I was like, ah, oh, this is yeah, so cool. I but, mean, how dire. But things have been that they could yeah. they had to go to Milton Keynes of all places just. that's a guilty pleasure movie <laughs> it is yeah I think Superman 3 is a lot worse than Superman yeah. 4 I, I, I don't understand why it's suddenly a vehicle for Richard Pryor it just seems like a Richard Pryor skit with Superman in it money yeah money else but at money. least Superman 4 has a villain and yeah you know I didn't manage to get Gene Wilder back Gene Hackman yeah, Gene Wilder that would have been ace that would have been cool that would have been awesome so Richard Pryor you see you saying uh, yeah so yeah Gene Hackman Gene Hackman the one way that to me is like what uh, Jaws 4 was the Michael Caine oh god yeah. so, oh Jaws 4 we forgot that yeah Roaring Sharks and Michael Caine's house yeah oh. <laughs> for those of you unaware there is a quote from Michael Caine where he says he was asked um, have you ever seen Jaws 4 it's terrible and he says something like no I haven't seen it but I have seen the house it built yeah that's <laughs> which I just gotta admire his honesty up there uh, I, mean, I do like Jaws 3 though. Jaws 3 Jaws is just 3 is cool, you know. Fun. Jaws 3 it's is basic, and, and Jaws 2 is, is, while it's quite weak, it's basically a slasher movie with a shark, yeah. which is quite an interesting combination if you want to watch it. Yeah. But Jaws is just an example of a franchise that doesn't need to exist yeah. past its first. You know, it's just like The Exorcist. Like, yeah. There's a bad movie, The Exorcist yeah. 3, 4, sorry. A 2, sorry, not. But then again, that was made for that was made for the money. Wasn't that was it? definitely made for the money. And yeah. then they did the third one at the end of the eighties, and I didn't bother. Third one's really that. good, actually. Like the third one is is underrated. That's something that's that's uh, that's some um, pop uh, that, that on your list. Eighties, late eighties, wasn't it? I think it was nineteen ninety, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, early late eighties. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was when films like that could get a cinema release. Yeah, I know. It's strange. It's hard to even. I mean, I think, I when we went to see Rambo. It's the first 18 film I've seen in cinema for a long time. Yeah. And it's quite a it's quite a sad thing not to see more mature films and money. Money, happy money. It's always money, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, that's for another podcast. This is yeah. This is definitely. Then again, look at the James Bond films. Die another day. Mm. Batman and Robin with James Bond in it. Yeah. Uh, I call it the fourth Austin Powers. Oh, it's yeah, Austin Powers. Yeah, definitely. It is. So yeah, this is definitely what I'm gonna do with these. This is a definitely a teaser now for a bigger thing where we yeah we may on, have to like, carry this on yeah, yeah. So we or do our see. top ten worst sequels or something like that. But I see if we're, going, we're running out of time. I told everyone think oh you know what it really annoys me is when you get a film you truly love and they make a sequel and it makes you think that maybe the first one isn't so good. This yeah. is what they did for Fantastic Four for me. It was so Fantastic Four and Rise of the Silver Surfer made me forget how enjoyable the first one was until like uh, I bought it again on Blu-ray this year the box set. Well, the box of the first two. I mean, uh, uh, the Fantastic Four films. You, know, you watch them back; they're not as bad as you thought they were. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of like. The, I quite like the first one actually. Yeah. I don't, it's not as bad as everyone makes out. I mean, it's not certainly not the worst Marvel movie. I mean, Elektra is yeah. way worse. It's got Chris Evans in it. it gave us Chris Evans. Yeah, so true. Yeah, yeah. So that's that one. Yeah, that is weird. So we have done this in under ten minutes. Thank you for listening Somehow. to. Yeah, we did it. We'll, we'll be doing a bigger, a longer one very, very soon. Yeah, I think this is definitely. Ever, a subject. So. I think a good subject as well would be. Um, if you were to make a sequel to a really shit movie and make it good, what would it be? That would be a good subject. That's another one we're going to be doing. Yeah. So see you all on another 8 and under 10 minutes on the, on the High Ground podcast. Adios, amigos.